is kingdom minded. We have Church of God, Apostolic, Assembly of God, Baptist, Lutheran, I don't care what you are, you are welcome in this place. And I thought about the story of Joshua. They were in a battle, and the captain of the host shows up. And Joshua asked him, So, whose side are you on? Are you on our side? Or are you on their side? Help me, Bishop. Um, but he asked, Whose side are you on? And the captain of the host said, I'm on nobody's side. I'm on my own side. And I was thinking, Why are we always trying to get people on our side? <laughs> when we need to get them on God's side. Um, my mom made a statement before church. She said, He's the man. Or he's the main man, and I told him, and so the brother here said, I'm not the main man, he's the main man. I am nothing. I am nothing, but I am ready to go. I want to read you a scripture. I had this on my mind um, earlier today. First Thessalonians chapter 4. We know that scripture. We talk about it. We read about it. We shout about it. It says, but I would not have you, chapter 4, or First Thessalonians, it says, but I would not have you ignorant. To be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, <laughs> that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them which also sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this is we for this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that, that with we which are alive and remain. We that are alive and remain among unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven. He shall descend from heaven with a shout and with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Them which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the cloud to meet the Lord in the air and so shall we ever be with the Lord wherefore comfort one another with these words so I'm here to comfort you today with these words that he is coming again well we have we he has been here once he died he rose and went back to heaven sent us the comforter to intercede for us and to give us power and he is coming he is going to come back again for his people and I just want to admonish you briefly. If you will turn with me to First John or Third John, there's three books there. Third, third John chapter or Third John verse two. And I promise you, that I will not keep you long. Give me about five, ten minutes. I enjoy the singing. It has encouraged me. It has lifted my spirit. The cornerstone. I do appreciate it. You coming to be with us here tonight. It says, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in hell, even as thou thy soul prosper. It says, For I rejoice greatly when the brethren came and testified of the truth that is in thee, even as thou walkest in the truth. I have no greater joy, no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth. But he says, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in hell, even as thy soul prosper. And I believe that is what Isaiah said. He said, God says that I desire to bless thee, that thou shalt prosper and be in good health. But I want to admonish you for a few minutes. God gives grace to sinners, but he gives glory to saints. Some settle for grace, and I want grace, I need grace, without his grace and mercy, I am nothing. But I want glory as well. God promised to change us from glory to glory. Change us from glory to glory. He is going to manifest himself through us and make himself visible in us. We have prayed prayers. We have prayed prayers that we may have forgotten about. But God has not forgotten. We have made covenants and God remembers those covenants. We have made commitments and God remembers those commitments. We will, we will never go on with God until we settle in our heart and mind that God wants to do us good. He wants to do us good, church. He wants to bless us. He is pulling on us and talking on us, trying to take off the break. But will we allow Him to? We must come under the spout where the glory comes out. 
In Deuteronomy chapter 8, I'm going to read it, 1 through 13, it talks about how God wants to bless us, make us a head and not the tail, bless us in our goings and everything we do, our field and our land, everything, God wants to bless us if you will obey Him. God told Abraham that I want to bless you and make you a blessing. He wants to make His church the talk of the town. He wants to do great things amongst us. Why? Because we bear His name. Like I said earlier, I'm not the main man. Bishop is not the main man here. He is the main man. He's in charge. He's our commander in chief. He wants his name great amongst the nations. My name is nothing but his name. With his name, his name is the one that drives out devils. God wants to thrust his church into prominence. Listen, I have a feeling that before everything is said and done, that he wants his church to rise up and walk out into the central stage of the world history. We see a lot of things happening right now, but we don't see his church out there doing the work that she needs to be doing. But he wants his church to be out there in world history with the glow of his glory and the fragrance of his presence, with signs following and the fruit of the Spirit dangling from their lives. He wants us to move throughout the world, healing the sick, healing the sick and raising the dead and ministering love and peace and forgiveness so that the world says, who are these people? Who are those? Who are they? Some will say these are the people of God, that is the bride of Christ. I think he is wanting to bring one last day's witness of his presence and of his power to this world like we have never seen before. God wants to raise his church to this, to central stage. But let me ask you this. If you look at the shape of the church in today, the church all around the world, is not in the best shape that she should be in. If you were Jesus and had to marry the church today, would you want to get married right away? I would say, Father, give her a few more days. Give her a few more days to get ready. Maybe we can get her cleaned up a little bit more. God is wanting to do something special to the bride of Christ. Amen. We are looking at the wedding party, and everything seems to be getting ready. When you get married, you have to get things prepared. It takes a little preparation. It takes things that you have to do to get ready. You've got to get the, the uh, building and all the food and everything. It takes time and preparation. And everything is coming about. Prophecy is being fulfilled every day. God is wrapping this thing up. We are looking at the wedding party and everybody seems to be getting in place. But the issue is, where is the bride? Is she ready? Is she adorned? Is she radiant? Is her vessel filled and is it trimmed? I don't know what you mean, I am lovely over today. God's working on the bride and he's in the bridal chamber. Then the bride of Christ is going to march on the stage of world history. Oh yeah. And with a manifestation, I talked about that last week. I think God has called me to push the church into manifestation. You may say, well, manifestation? Manifestation is being all that God has called us to be. Everything. Having full power, walking in holiness, everything. But she's going to be full of manifestation of the power of God that will overshadow what has been read about in the book of Acts. We talk about what God used to do back in the good old days, but we have seen nothing yet. But God needs to do something in us to fix us, to get us ready for this event. God doesn't want to do it. God does not want us to be on offense or defense. He wants us to be on offense. I love the scripture. I love the scripture that says, he asked Peter a question, Peter, who am I? Or who do men say that I am? Some say this, some say that, some say this. He said, but who do you say that I am? He said, thou art the son of Christ. He said, Peter, upon this rock I will build my church. Upon that, do I understand? You know who I am, and I know who you are. You are, you know that I am Christ, and I know that you are Peter. And he said, upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail. And we always preach that we need to stand. We need to stand on the, not let the gates of hell come up against us. And we're always on the defense. But guess what? I believe it's time to get on the offense. And that's what we are doing here today. We are taking the gospel to the world, and we're not just going to sit, sit back. Stand back and watch things happen. We're going to take the gospel to all creatures all over the world. The cornerstone, you guys can just, you know, stay home. Say, well, I hope you're not having a few people here today, so we won't come back. Um, or you can take 
we all tend to say we're going to do great things no matter who does it or who goes. I am kingdom minded and I love people. We have talked about this. We don't want money. We don't want no money for ourselves from start to finish. We're in this to see souls saved. Amen. Um, I have a job. God has blessed me. And we're not going to take a dime. We are trying to raise money. We have asked you to come here today to try to raise money for the local church that we are building and wanting to buy. And every dime that we receive from here on out will go directly for the church and for the kingdom. I am tired of seeing so lost. My heart has been hurt in the last year that people have lied to us. And I appreciate you, Cornerstone, for being men and women of your word. You say you will come and you have come. And I appreciate that. But we have been lied to by Christians and pastors and ministers. And I don't care who lied to me. But when you lie to me, you lie to God. And that's not even the worst of it. What has hurt me the most over the last year, as we have tried to get this work on, is that people have been waiting. They have been waiting for a church to go to that is filled with love and commitment for them. They have been wanting a church that would preach them the truth. And I love people. And because people keep lying to us, we have been unable to reach out to them. But no more. Now is the time. This is the season that we're going to move forward on offense. But God is getting her bride ready in these last days, so we must rise up and do the work. Rise up and build as we had never built before. So I'd like for you to stand with me if you would, and I want us to pray that God will allow us to be ready, that we'll have our vessels, that we will be cleaned up. Lord, fix up whatever has to be fixed. Clean us, wash us, pull us, do whatever you have to do to make us what we are supposed to be. He is going to have a people. There is going to be a remnant. There is going to be an idea. I preached last week about hearing the sound of an abundance of rain. I hear the sound of a mighty army. I hear the sound of a, of a revival. And it has to begin with us. It has to begin in our hearts. You can have the church of God in Jesus' name above the door. You can have the church of God. You can have that above the door. That doesn't matter. But if our heart ain't right, it don't matter. It does not matter who you think you are or what you think you are. If our hearts are not clean, so the wedding party must get prepared. She must be adorned. She must be white. He said, I'll come back after a glorious church without spot, wrinkle, or any such thing. So let us pray. Lord, tonight we thank you for who you are. We thank you that you have redeemed us. You have redeemed us by your blood. You have washed us, white us and all. Forgive us if there would be sin in our hearts and not pleasing to you, help us to get it cleaned up. Help us to make ourselves adorned for you that you can be amongst us. You said that you inhabit the praise of your people. And we thank you that you are with us when we praise you. But Lord, help us to be prepared for the last day harvest. Help us to love one another. Help us not to fight one another. Help us to have love for one another. Help us, Lord, give us a burden for souls and give us a burden for love for those that need you. Bring us the prostitute, bring us the drug addict, addict, bring us the homosexual, bring us all those that drink and smoke. Lord, bring them all to us, for we have what they need. Lord, I pray for Cornerstone, I pray that you would open up brand new doors to them as they, as they, as they have been faithful to you this night. I pray that doors will be open for them, financial blessings for them, souls for them. I pray that you would bless their families and their homes. I pray that you would bless them on their jobs, wherever they go. I pray that you bless them going in and them going out. Bless everything they do. Bless those that have been here tonight. I pray for my mother. And for Lee's mother, Lord, bless her faithfulness. I thank you for Mark and Amanda. Lord, we thank you that they have come here tonight. I pray that you bless them. I pray, Lord, that you bless all those that hear these videos, Lord, and put them on the internet. I pray that your spirit would draw them and grip them. 
Help us, Lord, to be ready for this last day's movement. We thank you for who you are and for what you are doing. Help us, O oh God. Help us to reach the lost. Help us to be servants. Help us to be that called out group that you have called us to be. We thank you and we honor you and we bless you for you are in control. We thank you today in Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord, and we praise you today. How about we do one more song? I don't, Mother, will you lead us in a song? Um, amazing verse.
prepared to be better at all times. Keep doing what we're doing, faithful in the littlest things, and in the big things. Be faithful in everything. Um, I would turn over to the bishop. I appreciate all that you have done. All right. Just want to say a few things. Y'all can be seated for a second. Uh, the Church of God in Jesus' name, Tabernacle, has came a long way. Just to give you a little bit of history, we started this organization a little over a year ago. We started to perform it, got all of our paperwork done through Secretary of State and so forth and so on. And um, it's been a long part back, but we're here. And uh, we have fought demons, we have fought devils, we have fought tooth and nail. And I'm so thankful for the Holy Ghost in those times that we just about lost our insanity that he was that to help us do it. And uh, uh, I, I am apostolic. I don't make no apology of it. I am what I am. You are what you are. And uh, I started out in an apostolic church. And God knew the direction he was taking us. And lo and behold, uh, the people started kindly flocking to me, and jealousy arose. And the pastor told me, he said, you're going to overthrow my people here. He said, we can't have it. And so we ended up having to leave that church. I still love those people. We were in another church. The same thing happened. And we're not wanting to name Paul or any of that, but uh, God had to get us out of that. He had to get us out of that to bring us to the place that we are now. And it's been a long, hard road. Like he said, we've had a lot of preachers lie to us, a lot of pastors, a lot of organizations. We thought we had a building in Fremont, and uh, they were supposed to rent it to us. And we did a lot of work over there. We mowed the grass. We cut the brush. We we got everything said and done. And then the last final minute, it was, no, we have to sell you the building. Uh, talk about devastation, because there's a people over in the Fremont area that they're waiting. They're looking. And I'm not like your other preachers out there. I'm a hands-on type person. I don't need to steal nobody's flock. I know how to evangelize. Me and my father, we took a church in West Virginia, two members, and in one year we had it over 200 people because we got out and we evangelized that community door to door. So we know how to build a church and we're not out to steal flock or we're not out to steal sheep. And I want to make that very clear. Um, but God has brought us to this place. He brought me from West Virginia. I was over in West Virginia and over in the Kentucky part of uh, that where West Virginia and Kentucky meet over towards Ashland and Huntington and God spoke to me and told me to move this away. And up one day I decided to pick up and move. Didn't know how. Come to find out my father had left me some money. And so with that money we moved down here and you know we're here to do a work. And so with that it has been a long hard battle but it's through the grace and the mercy that we are where we are. Uh, we've got several events that we are really advertising. We want to mention them so that you can take them from here tonight and please help us spread the word. If you got Facebook, it's all over Facebook. Uh, share it. Let everybody know about it. Um, the first event that we're going to have is here at the Will of Church of God facilities. And we are so thankful for Will of Church of God and for allowing us to have church in here, to have a building anytime we want it. And we are so grateful to Pastor Greg. He is a humble, humble man of God. We, we honor him and his church for that. But uh, the fourth, we're going to have a hot dog sale here at the church. And we are going to have Fisherman Quartet, One Voice, Promise. There's a whole bunch of them that's going to be here on the fourth. And we are going to have a gospel scene. And uh, we really want to advertise this big time. We've got it in the newspaper. We've got several radio stations that is 
uh, already announcing this, and we are going to actually go on three of those radio stations, one in Clyde, one in Mansfield, and one in Upper Sandusky, and do a 30-minute program about some of the things that are going on. And so keep us much in prayer because we really want to advertise this on the fourth uh, because we're, we're wanting a big turnout. And uh, we have to rate absolutely, positively, and I know some of you want to say, wow, really? But we have to raise $10,000 by the end of this year. I want $10,000 because every dime that we get is going to be matched by a federal judge. So we have to have $10,000. No ands, ifs, or buts uh, in order to purchase the building that we want. It's already out. All we have to do is come up with the money. So we really, really, really need to advertise this big time. Uh, then on the 18th and 19th, really want you to uh, pray about it. If you can, please try to come out and support us. We are going to have a Miracle Healing Deliverance Victory service here. And we're, me and Brother Andy will be preaching that. And uh, we're really looking forward to that. We're going to go into a time of prayer and fasting. And we're going to see great things happen. So really want you to uh, try to be out here, invite your friends and everybody. And then on uh, the 20. 5th of October, here at the church from 4 to 8, we're going to have uh, our Oktoberfest. And with Oktoberfest, we are going to have gospel singing here in the sanctuary. Uh, we're lining up our groups now, so if you know any groups that can help us, we'll be grateful. Uh, we're really needing to set up a lot of groups that day, because we're going to go from 4 o'clock to 8 o'clock maybe even 9 o'clock. Uh, we're going to have different games for the kids with prizes. We're going to have a horseshoe tournament outside. We're going to have homemade pie and homemade chili contest, uh, which I think is $5 entry fee, and whoever ends up with, as the winner, uh, will end up with half of the pot on that. So that's kind of a catchy thing that we throw out there just so that we can have the more pies we can bring in and the more chili we can bring in, the more profit we can bring into the church. So we're going to have that. That's going to be the fifth. We'll probably even have a little yard sale out there. So if you have anything that you don't want, let me know. We'll come get it and uh, put it out there and then let people look through it and give us a donation, whatever. So uh, we're really trying to do whatever we can. And I'm so glad to see Mark here because he is such a hard fellow to get a hold of. I have tried for two weeks, literally, call his phone, and it rings off the hook, and all you get is TGMA, 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 TGMA. So I'm so glad that he finally has came tonight. Uh, he has been a hard fellow to get a hold of. But uh, we really want everyone to put these three dates on your calendar and remember them. We're having church service here every Friday. We don't have seniors. We're still going to have church uh, because it's all about the Word and it's all about breaking the Word of God to people and, and seeing lives changed and delivered. But we've got Donna Sue and One Voice and several of them uh, that's going to be here on those two days, uh, the 4th and the 25th. So we're going to have a lot going on that day. And anybody that wants to volunteer your time or help with this, I guarantee we can help. We can have you to help somewhere. If nothing else, we've got the kitchen, we've got the gospel scene, we've got quite a few things that we've got to do. And me and Andy is but two people. Uh, Pat is another one. She'll probably help with that. And I think his sister Art is helping. Uh, Mom, uh, so we'll, we'll, we'll need a lot of volunteers that day because we want to do a lot of things that day. And anybody that's got any ideas, we're sure open to them. So that's what we've got going on in the next few weeks, the next, next month or so. So definitely keep those in prayer and share them on Facebook because more people we can get the word out to, the, 
before we can get this one. And then in November, we're going to have Adam Kraft. Aaron. Aaron Kraft. Uh, he's going to be here the 24th, which is a Thursday. Um, he's going to be in Ohio. So we had talked to them today, and they said, well, while we're up in that area, we might as well do a benefit for y'all. So they're not going to charge me nothing but for the motel for the night. So everything that we bring in will actually go right into the church. So we're looking for a good crowd on that night too. So uh, that is pretty much our announcements. And we want to, again, give honor where honor is due. We thank Pat for coming and singing. We thank Cornerstone for coming. And uh, Cornerstone, if y'all want to sing another song or two, y'all can come and sing. <laughs> Uh, and then we'll dismiss with prayer here. Double That's right, go ahead. Uh, go ahead and dismiss us. You want to go to the uh, It's back in the back. Right. Uh, we do appreciate you coming and taking the opportunity to come up. Um, I actually had a good year started. Um, we can do a lot more to the company, a lot of travel and so forth. Um, so, if you like to give anything, there's an awesome place in the back. If you like to give anything for this, this work, we would appreciate it. Um, I can remember we're not taking a dime of it, and all those that are serving for the people. Um, but if you're staying with me, I'd like to pray real quick. Ask the Lord to bless us. Lord, we thank you for who you are. We thank you for what you've done. We thank you for the uh, cornerstone for being here with us. We thank you for our mother, Simeon, and all those that have come out. Lord, we thank you for who you are. We thank you that you have redeemed us. I pray that you bless them, keep them. May your face shine upon them. Lord, I pray that you bless everything they do. Bless your people. Protect them on the highway. Bless them and all that they do. We thank you for who you are. We thank you for your time. We pray that you bless the local church. We pray that you bless the faithfulness and let us use the building. We pray, Lord, that you would help us, help us to reach people for you, Lord, that we can be about your business. We want to be about a college business. We want to reach the law. We want to advance the kingdom. Help us, Lord. But in Jesus' name, amen. God bless you all. We appreciate you.